Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts, the most decent white wizard in history. Chapter 16. Your new success. Cedric. Professor McGonagall congratulated. Then he looked towards the patron saint condensed by Cedric. Its appearance looks a bit like an elegant ape man, with a pair of large black eyes hidden in its hair, and only a hint of sadness emerges from the gaps in the hair. This is. Professor McGonagall quickly recognized the creature. She stared at the creature, which was covered with silk-like, silvery long fine hairs. He slowly spoke out its information. The invisible beast demiguise is a gentle-tempered herbivore that likes peace. The invisible beast's fur is very valuable because its hair can be used to weave invisibility cloaks. This is a gentle and sensitive guardian angel. But why is this? Professor McGonagall was indeed confused. With Cedric's hatred of evil and his unswerving determination to destroy Voldemort as his own mission. Why is this a patron saint? Yeah, I didn't expect it at first. Cedric smiled in relief. He always thought so. My patron saint will be more majestic and domineering, or at least a very lively animal. But I think back to the happiness I imagined just now. He understood. Just now, what kind of happiness were you thinking about? Professor McGonagall also reacted. Afternoon, tea, dessert, a rocking chair, a book, a cat or a dog, and the warm sunshine. Cedric held out his hand. The invisible beast in midair narrowed its eyes and obediently rubbed its head against his outstretched palm, like a docile cat. Professor McGonagall's eyes sparkled again. It turns out that the real happiness of the sunny and cheerful boy is just a warm afternoon. Guilt nod at her insides. Professor McGonagall, who was cold on the outside and hot on the inside, felt extremely guilty. This is all due to the incompetence of us adult wizards, who cannot even provide a peaceful environment for children. He forcibly forced a quiet little wizard to become a wizard who worked hard to fight against the darkness. Even a comfortable childhood cannot be enjoyed. But Professor McGonagall couldn't stop Cedric. She couldn't tell him that everything was destined and tell him to stop trying. Because this is a complete negation of his past efforts. It might even cause his faith to collapse. Congratulations, kid. That's it for today. Professor McGonagall hurriedly covered his face and left. And Cedric was immersed in this rare moment of peace. He sat down face to face with his patron saint, staring in a meaningless daze. Until, a series of system beeps woke him up. Congratulations on passing Professor McGonagall's test and gaining 1000 experience points. Congratulations on passing Principal Dumbledore's preliminary test and gaining 2,000 experience points. Initial test. Are there still stages to the test? And why was McGonagall with Dumbledore? Cedric's eyes suddenly became clear. After receiving the reward, he should have been happy, but he couldn't help but shudder. The patron saint in front of him also made a ripple and turned into countless starlights and disappeared. Patronus Charm. Did Dumbledore ask Professor McGonagall to teach him? So, is this to test what's inside of me? This is not funny, because many Death Eaters cannot summon a Patronus at all. Magic has a lot to do with the human heart. Recalling the incident when Professor McGonagall mentioned teaching him the Patronus charm. Cedric suddenly broke out in sweat. I thought I hadn't been noticed by Dumbledore yet, but I didn't expect that he had already arranged for McGonagall to test me on the first day I entered Hogwarts. This old man is good at planning. There is no doubt that he is one of the most scheming wizards in the entire HP. The sense of oppression he brings to people is really terrifying. It's a pity. If your calculations weren't so ruthless, I would rather communicate with you more. What a pity. In order to win, you can die yourself, Snape, or even Harry. I don't want to die. So I was destined to find my own way. What fate? What plan? I want to prove the truth with my strength. I want to try if I can break fate when I have the strength to crush Voldemort. Truly become the one who solves everything. Aren't they just seven horcruxes? Voldemort, just wait, I am destined to score seven to zero on you. Next up is Cedric. He continued to consume magic power to practice magic until he was exhausted, and then climbed into the resting room. Go find Snape tomorrow morning. It can't be delayed any longer. I just got 3000 experience points, so I must upgrade Occlumency first. And we have to find a way. I want Snape not to notice that I actually care about Occlumency. This is a bit difficult. 
After all, it's still a child's body. After his magic power was drained, Cedric quickly fell asleep through various methods. Good thing, this question did not bother him for long. Because Snape not only accepted it, but also increased the time he spent teaching him to three hours a day. It also tested his learning ability in an all-round way. Occlumency, do you really don't want to learn it anymore? Snape confirmed to Cedric again. Yes, if the hard training is just to close my brain so that no one can detect it, for me, I would actually rather let everyone know what I think. Cedric was calm on the surface, but actually he was very excited. Occlumency is finally here. Consumption of 2800 experience points. Occlumency LV1 1 100th is upgraded to Occlumency LV8 1 800th. In an instant, a large amount of knowledge poured into his mind. Cedric mastered this ability instantly and put his brain completely under his own supervision. Very good. There is only 1,700 experience points short of the full level 10, 800 points from 8 to 9, 900 points from 9 to 10. It should be difficult for ordinary people to break through their own defenses. Even if the other party probes, he will react and even be able to concentrate to fight. What a boring idea. Although Snape said this, he still recorded this item carefully. Soon the entire test was completed. Except for Occlumency, which Cedric didn't like to learn, his tests in both spells and potions were close to perfect scores. If you consider his age, it's normal for everyone to give him full marks. Very talented. I must admit that you are the most outstanding first-year student I have ever seen. Snape looked at the record in his hand. I couldn't help but have thoughts in my heart. He will be lurking next to Voldemort in the future, and he doesn't know where his future destiny will drift. If only he could have a disciple who could succeed him. It seems pretty good too. Cedric has undergone an upgrade to Occlumency, and his perception of eyes has become even more acute. After noticing Snape's gaze, he showed his trademark smile of a cheerful big boy, Professor, I will work harder. Um, Snape suddenly closed the notebook in his hand, then let's start now. Yes, Cedric calmed down and began to listen carefully to Snape's teachings. Learning is fulfilling. By the time Cedric came to his senses, it was already three days before the start of school at Hogwarts. The professors are all busy. With his free time, Cedric had time to think about what he should do after enrolling in school. Three days flew by in the blink of an eye. September 1, 1989, was the day the Hogwarts Express departed again. Child, are you sure you want to do this? The Diggories looked at Cedric and the sign he held with uncomprehending eyes. The sign read, Hogwarts Guide. Certainly. Cedric placed the sign under his hands. After confirming that the position of his hands would not block the text, he raised his head and explained to his parents. Perhaps for a pure blood wizard like me, magic and the Hogwarts Express are all self-evident common sense and the default standard of life. But in fact, for many students from muggle families who are exposed to magic for the first time, these commonplace things may pose a challenge to them when they try it for the first time. Mr. and Mrs. Diggory looked at each other. My son always seems to make sense every time he speaks. While I was living in Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall often went out to find those muggle-born wizards to let them know about the existence of the magical world. Most of the time, this is the first time in their lives that they understand the entire magical world. Cedric continued to explain. He tried to bring them more into the perspective of muggle home wizards. Think about it, they probably don't know about Dumbledore, they don't know about Hogwarts, they don't even know about Butterbeer, BB's braised beans and chocolate frogs. I heard the familiar beer and snacks. The Diggories nodded repeatedly and agreed with Cedric's argument. That seems to be the case. Guide and perfect, pure blood wizards recognize wizards from muggle families, and reward 100 experience points. Certainly. Cedric was shocked after receiving the reward. He continued to guide. Even if they learn more about the magical world from the books they bought in advance, the awkwardness and confusion they feel when they first arrive in the magical world will not be completely eliminated. He patted himself. To a certain extent, this is also a kind of emotional and emotional comfort. It can make them completely relax on the first step when they arrive at Hogwarts. Since Hogwarts will admit all kinds of wizards. Then I just hope that in future studies, everyone can be less antagonistic, more understanding, less hostile, and more tolerant. 
Mr. and Mrs. Diggory nodded. Good, good, still familiar taste and familiar formula. The days when I was taught by my son to be righteous and upright came back after disappearing for more than a month. It's still that familiar feeling. After five years of experience, they can easily control such a scene. Kid, do what you think is right, I will always support you. Come on, we'll leave first. Mr. Diggory patted Cedric on the shoulder and gave him an approving look. Although he couldn't fully understand his son, but he didn't care. As long as this does not hinder him, he can just go to his neighbors and colleagues to show off with the complimentary envelopes that Professor McGonagall keeps mailing him. We're proud of you, kid. Mrs. Diggory hugged Cedric and left with her husband. Soon, the first batch of students to report have arrived at King's Cross Station. Hogwarts Guide. When did you arrange the work? Huh, why haven't I seen you? A lady in gorgeous clothes and exquisite jewelry was standing at the entrance looking at him up and down. Cedric has a good memory. In addition, there are not many pure blood families left. So he immediately recognized this lady with plum freckles on her left forehead. Hello, Mrs. Avery. I'm Cedric Diggory and I'm here to guide new students who are unfamiliar with the admissions process. Oh, the Diggory children look really good. I heard he was a pure blood descendant. Mrs. Avery greeted her politely and left with her children. In fact, it's easy to tell who's coming. The wizard families entered the station with firm eyes and walked straight towards the nine and three quarter position. As for muggle families, it's different. They will first eagerly look for a spot between platforms nine and ten. Wait until you see Cedric. They will invariably show expressions of relief. Please don't worry, the Hogwarts Express will leave at eleven o'clock, you still have enough time. Correctly guide new students to board the bus in an orderly manner, and 100 experience points will be awarded. The journey takes about 6 hours, and there are carts selling lunch and snacks on board. Don't worry after you get off the bus. There will be Gamekeeper Hagrid and Dean of Students Filch to guide everyone. Inform the new students correctly about the admission system and reward them with 100 experience points. Don't worry, everyone will have their own bed. Yes, there are all kinds of food. If you are hungry and want to eat, you can always go to the kitchen to get it, or you can find me. I'm Cedric. Correctly answer the questions of the new students and you will be rewarded with 100 experience points. Things were not as tiring as Cedric thought. The wizards who went to school in 1989 were actually born in 1978, when Voldemort was at his peak. In this turbulent era, not many wizards were willing to have children at that time. It wasn't until 80 years after Harry Potter was born and Voldemort was destroyed for the first time that the number of newborns would surge again. Wait until Harry Potter is in fifth grade. Hogwarts now has close to a thousand students. The current number of students in Hogwarts is only over 300. The total number of freshmen this year is only 32, but there are quite a few wizards from muggle families among them, as many as 11. Cedric stayed on guard for two hours. A total of 1100 experience points were received, plus the remaining 200 points, for a total of 1300 available experience points. He first raised the magic power in his heart to the full. Consumption of 800 experience points. Your initial magic power increases from 42 points to 50 points, triggering the medal, Born to be Extraordinary. Born to be Extraordinary, the upper limit of magic power is increased by 10 points, from 100 to 110 points. Well, the medal actually has additional bonus effects. Cedric suddenly became happy. Isn't this another channel for improvement? In the future, as various numerical values increase, I should be able to activate various bonuses. Let's go, let's go. I glanced at the time and there were five minutes left. Cedric rushed into platform nine and three quarters with the sign in hand. The Crimson Hogwarts Express was parked next to the platform. Woo, woo. The chimney of the steam locomotive emitted thick black smoke amidst the sound of the whistle, reminding reluctant people that the Hogwarts Express was about to leave. Cedric is very agile. He quickly passed through the chattering crowd, stepped on the pedal and quickly jumped into the car. The first few carriages were already crowded with students. Cedric, who had spoken a lot just now, was already a little tired. He walked all the way to the back, found a quiet car, locked it, and began to lie down and rest. Wake up. It's already noon. 
Cedric opened the carriage door so that he could buy himself some more food when the dining car passed by. As a result, the dining car didn't come. However, a pair of twin brothers with fiery red hair passed by first. Hey, look, who is this? Hey, let me think about it. Ah, uh, by the way, isn't this our great good man, Cedric? Oh, by the way, good guy Cedric. He's so good at pretending. The reason why Fred and George were so mean to him was. That's because at the entrance, Mrs. Weasley praised Cedric so much when she saw him. While praising him as someone else's child, she also taught the two brothers a good lesson. Cedric knows the charm of men. In fact, it lies in strength and humility. As a guide, that's how he shows his humble side. Now that the Weasley twins are shining over him, he has to show his strong side. Transfiguration. One second later, Cedric in Kung Fu Panda form opens his mouth in a condescending manner. He let out a long roar towards the two of them. Roar. Roars and spittle flew everywhere, murderous intent and fishy smell danced together. Ah, the Weasley twins, with their faces covered in saliva, fled instantly. Mom, there is a bear. There's a big bear. Black and white. Like a devil. Because he ran too fast. The Weasley twins collided and fell to the floor of the corridor at the same time, and then crawled away on all fours at high speeds. How embarrassing to be. It's finally quiet. The next time. Cedric soon waited for the dining car. He stared blankly at the rapidly passing pastures and plains outside for a while, until the sky gradually became dark. Finally, the Hogwarts platform arrived. Freshmen. Freshmen come over here. Cedric was still in the car. Then I heard the shouts of Hagrid and Filch. Speaking of which, did Filch appear here, or was he the one who suggested it? I wonder how he did it. He did not rush to get off the bus with others. Instead, he waited until the end, jumped out of the car, found the group of first-year students, and followed them at the back. All freshmen, follow me. Watch your step. Hagrid's tall figure led the way holding an oil lamp. Filch quickly found Cedric, who was standing at the end of the team. He said coyly, Cedric, do you think it's still too late for me? What do you mean, Mr. Filch? Cedric doesn't understand what the other party means. Is it because I asked him to take care of the newcomers, and then he became unhappy? Never mind. If he doesn't want to, I won't force him anymore. It seemed that it would be difficult to make him popular among the new students. He might as well concentrate on researching the drug to break the squib. No, no, no. It's not like that. Filch waved his hands repeatedly, with some embarrassed embarrassment on his face. He turned around with some restraint, facing away from the first-year student in front of him, and then took out a small red delicate card from his pocket. Cedric wanted to pick it up. Filch carefully avoided his hand. I will do it myself. Rough hands gently untied the silk greeting card. Filch spread out the greeting card as if offering a treasure, and then unfolded the card with both hands. Fingertips point to sign. Look, this is my name, Mr. Filch, and this is the card Tyne gave me. Oh, is it so? Only then did Cedric react. He remembered the name Tyne, one of the eleven Muggle family wizards. It seemed that when his family sent him to school, they taught him some, little tricks, after school. I also received many similar gadgets at the door. Cedric remembered. He had already introduced Hagrid and Filch at that time, and they probably remembered them right away. They even wrote his name specifically and used the greeting card as a, little gift. Although this kind of flattery is not worth promoting. But it has become a supporting point for Filch's transformation. Cedric immediately encouraged. Look, sometimes it's not that hard to be liked, right? But I. Filch subconsciously raised his hand and touched his face. Come to think of it, he also knows that his appearance is not liked by others. Okay. Cedric held his hand. You couldn't tell me that the student who sent you the greeting card just now couldn't see you. Watching the team in front of me go further and further away. Cedric could only hold Filch and talk while walking. Of course, it would be nice if the appearance could be cleaner. I, what else can I do? Filch carefully put away the greeting card and followed Cedric quietly. You are a Hogwartsman. There is so much you can do if you want to. Cedric had already thought about this. But he didn't expect it. I will have the opportunity so soon to guide Filch to do this. 
For example, many students will be troubled by moving stairs and even delay class. I, I can tell them how to go. Also, remember what I said before. Punishment does not gain respect. Of course you will be punished for violating school rules, but you can. You can tell them the dangers. Filch shook his hands. He repeated everything he had heard from Cedric before but did not really understand. Every school rule has a reason behind it. For example, it's forbidden to hang out outside at night. It happened before. A young wizard named Lateral was wandering outside and accidentally encountered a magic trap and was seriously injured. Like the forbidden book zone. There was a little wizard who chanted the spell above randomly and ended up with a lizard's head on his head and spent half a semester in the infirmary. There are a lot more. I want to warn them and make them truly aware of the dangers. When punishing, you can also tell them about the unknown history of Hogwarts. The two talked all the way. Hagrid led everyone down a steep and narrow path. The oil lamp in his hand illuminated the surrounding area for at most three meters. The team behind them almost all used the moonlight to grope in the darkness with one foot lower and one foot higher. Because Filch had an oil lamp in his hand, several students leaned here subconsciously. Go. Cedric bumped into Filch. Ah, oh, oh. Filch raised the oil lamp in his hand high, and then walked forward into the second half of the line. Children, come here, I have an oil lamp here. Watch your step. Just around the corner, you can see Hogwarts for the first time. Hagrid, who was at the front of the team, had no choice but to look back. I told you my words, what should I do? In desperation, Hagrid had no choice but to stand at the corner and open his arms to everyone. Welcome to Hogwarts. A black lake suddenly opened up at the end of the path. Everyone looked up. Looking around, there is a high hillside on the other side of Who, and a towering castle stands on the hillside. There are many castle spears. Warm yellow candlelight spilled out through the window. Each boat can seat up to four people. Hagrid jumped on a boat himself. Filch seemed to have enlightened himself now. He stood on the shore and helped every student get on the boat. I even had a fight with two students. Ding, you look like a true gentleman on the outside, attract people to do good, and inspire Filch to really start helping others. You will be rewarded with 1000 experience points. Very good, but in the end I end up on a boat by myself. Cedric complained. But for the sake of experience points, this is bearable. Then he put on Hagrid's simulation card, walked alone in a small boat, and rode quickly towards Hogwarts. Soon, Hogwarts continues to magnify in everyone's eyes. In this era, such a magnificent building can indeed give people a huge shock. Perhaps, freshmen must row into Hogwarts just to leave this imprint on their hearts. Certainly. Cedric just thought it was beautiful. At the same time, he was also muttering in his heart, Hogwarts is full of mysterious magic. It should be different this time, right? The boat carried everyone through the ivy curtain to the secret open entrance. Along the dark passage, they arrived at the underground dock. Climbing dozens of steps, after landing on a ground paved with gravel and cobblestones. Everyone has officially entered Hogwarts. In front of the huge oak door. Professor McGonagall was waiting for the arrival of the new students with his lips pursed. Condescending. The first thing she saw was Hagrid, then the students, and then she saw Filch in a boat, and Cedric in a single boat, rowing hard to catch up. McGonagall frowned slightly. I felt slightly unhappy. Filch went to join in the fun, but Cedric took the boat alone. Filch is really weird in the extreme. Not only did the students hate him, but almost none of the professors liked him. But the next scene, but it made Professor McGonagall look at Filch with admiration. After Hagrid docked, he took the list and walked towards Professor McGonagall, but Filch stood on the shore. After pulling all the little wizards ashore, he started to bite the dust with Cedric, the last one. The two seemed happy talking and laughing. More importantly, Filch, who had been looking grumpy all day, was actually very happy and smiling all the way. No need to guess. This must be all thanks to Cedric. What a magical child, it seems that even cows can understand human nature after listening to his words. Professor, everyone is here. Hagrid reminded in a low voice. Okay. Professor McGonagall comes to his senses. She returned to her usual neatness, turned around and opened the door. The burning torch on the stone wall brought light and heat to the children who had just crossed the dark lake. 
Everyone follow me, Professor McGonagall warned. Then he led the freshmen up the luxurious marble staircase. In the auditorium, the senior students have all arrived. They whispered to each other, making the whole auditorium buzz with voices. Professor McGonagall led the freshmen through the auditorium and to a small room at the other end of the hall. Welcome to Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall said. Before the opening banquet, we will conduct a test on which college everyone will enter. Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw and Slytherin. Each house has its own glorious history, and it has cultivated many outstanding wizards and witches. During your stay at Hogwarts, your outstanding performance will add points to the house, while violations of the rules will reduce the points of the house. At the end of the year the college with the highest score will win the college cup. I hope you all bring glory to your academy. The sorting ceremony will be held in front of all the teachers and students of the school. When it's ready over there, I'll come to pick you up. Professor McGonagall glanced at everyone, while waiting, please keep quiet. With that, she left the room. The room suddenly became quiet. Everyone squeezed together with their magic swords rubbing against each other, and there was a tense atmosphere everywhere in the room. After a while of silence, soon a weak voice sounded in the room. What do you think the sorting ceremony is like? I don't know, but I heard it will be very harsh and may even get us injured. Injured. Are you asking us to fight some monster? There are many magical plants that are also very dangerous. But we haven't learned anything yet. Everyone's voices became more and more urgent, and their guesses about the sorting ceremony became more and more outrageous. When Cedric came in after communicating with Filch, he even heard someone mention a fire dragon. I just don't know if the elders in his family are responsible for designing the Triwizard Tournament schedule. Bang. The sound of Cedric's door closing attracted the attention of many people. He is the guide. You're here. What's wrong? Is the sorting ceremony about to begin? Looking at the pair of longing eyes, Cedric showed a warm smile. Don't worry, everyone. Although I am also a freshman this year, I can assure you that the sorting ceremony will never hurt you. His words instantly raised more questions. What? You're a freshman too. Then how can you be the guide? For some special reasons, I checked into Hogwarts early and got to know a little bit about it. That's cool, man, have you learned magic? Of course, I have learned several magics. If you don't understand in the future, you can always come to me. You are so smart, you must be a Ravenclaw. The sorting ceremony hasn't started yet, but I like Hufflepuff better. Cedric was like a press conference. He kept a nice smile and answered everyone's questions calmly. Following his answers one by one, the atmosphere in the room is also much better. Gradually, even the wizards from pure blood wizard families were full of affection for Cedric. In the corner, the Weasley twins, who were out of tune with the surrounding emotions, were staring at Cedric with a sullen expression. When we learn magic, Fred spoke bitterly, we must avenge this. After George finished speaking, the two brothers turned to look at each other at the same time, and then nodded fiercely. From now on, the battle between one king and two ghosts has officially begun. Bang! Professor McGonagall returned to the classroom again. Follow me and form a single file. Come on, classmates, just stand behind me. Cedric was the first to follow. Ding! If you successfully appease your classmates, you will be rewarded with 1000 experience points. Very good. With a smile on his face, Cedric quickly followed Professor McGonagall to the front of the teacher's chair, facing all the students. The patched and dirty sorting hat was placed in front of everyone. The freshmen all looked at Cedric intentionally or unintentionally. Cedric, on the other hand, stared at the houses. Then, his hat cracked a slit that looked like a mouth, and he began to sing. You may think I'm not pretty. Cedric, who is listening to the sorting song right now, wouldn't know. He will create a new legend here again. Come put it on me. Don't be afraid. Don't panic. You are absolutely safe in my hands, because I am a thinking magic hat. After the sorting hat finished singing, the audience burst into applause. After the sorting hat bowed to the four dining tables one by one, he quickly became still. Professor McGonagall came forward holding the parchment with the list on it. Anyone whose name I read out should sit on a stool put on a hat, and be sorted into different schools after listening. Gladstone Parker. Cedric was the first to arrive, but ranked very last. 
After almost everyone completed the sorting, Cedric finally heard his name. He ran forward and took the sorting hat with both hands. Professor McGonagall's eyes couldn't help but soften after seeing him, and comforted him in a low voice. Relax, it'll be over soon. Thank you professor. Cedric put on the sorting hat and sat down calmly. Who knows the next second. He felt that there were countless soft tentacles trying to penetrate into his brain, and then they were blocked by his occlumency. Oh, this is a bit troublesome. The sound of the sorting hat sounded. My child, your heart is too sealed. Can you relax and let me take a look? That, you won't tell anyone. Cedric is really afraid of having his past life memories read. Of course, who do you think I am? I am the consciousness of the four deans. You can destroy me, but you absolutely cannot take away any memory or information from me. All right, even if it says so. Cedric didn't dare to let them all out. Fortunately, level 8 occlumency is enough for him to control his memory. The memories after coming to this world are slowly released. The sorting hat went down very strangely for a minute. In Cedric's ear, he started shouting nonstop. Oh my god, my god. The first thing the sorting hat read was the picture of Cedric starting from the age of five and rationally trying to destroy the big devil. Brave, the sorting hat shouted excitedly. What extraordinary courage this is. Faced with such difficulties and pressure at a young age, he was able to face it bravely without flinching. His courage is enough for him to show his true strength in adversity and dare to challenge himself and break through his limits. Then, it's Cedric who carefully allocates his daily schedule. And it is constantly modified according to the situation. And of course his memory of learning everything instantly. Wisdom. The sorting hat's voice was filled with surprise. No doubt. Cedric possesses extraordinary intelligence. He is able to maintain rational thinking in complex situations, gain deep insight into the nature of problems, and come up with wise solutions. His wisdom is like a bright light, enough to allow him to find opportunities in difficult moments and maintain a calm and clear mind in the face of any challenges. Then, after Cedric came to Hogwarts, a picture of the promise made to Hagrid and Filch, and the efforts made so far. There was even a declaration of vowing to defend Hogwarts to the death and destroy Voldemort. So touching, the sorting hat's tone was a little whimpering. Cedric, the epitome of loyalty. This is a reliable ally who consistently maintains his commitment and trust to friends, family or fellow students. At the crucial moment, he is always the first to stand up for his friends and never abandons them. His loyalty will earn him respect and trust, making him a worthy pillar of support for everyone. Last of the last, the sorting hat read the picture of Cedric leading his family at home and guiding Filch at Hogwarts. Extraordinary leadership, the sorting hat's voice became arrogant and cold. Cedric, a key player in the team, is able to inspire team members and guide them towards a common goal. He has excellent communication skills. At work, he is good at listening and understanding the needs of his team members while communicating instructions and goals clearly. Cedric. You are full of strong personal charm and infectious energy, which makes people want to follow you and move forward together. Oh my god, this time Cedric heard the harmony of a quartet. Ah, Cedric, Cedric. Excellent decision making and leadership skills, always able to make the most correct choices, courage to take responsibility, courage to face challenges, and always maintain an optimistic and determined attitude. This is, Cedric. Cedric blushed at this. What the sorting hat said was really nice. If he wasn't under everyone's attention now, he would really want to hear more. But forget it now. He didn't want to attract any further attention from Dumbledore yet. Hurry up and choose a college. Cedric urged in his head. Okay, okay, it's time to make the final choice. According to your qualities, no matter which college is suitable for you, so, which college do you like? Hufflepuff. Cedric answered without hesitation. Hufflepuff, the sorting hat shouted. Phew, Cedric breathed a sigh of relief. It probably took me a long time to do this, but fortunately, I didn't break any records. He took off his sorting hat and placed it respectfully on the four-legged stool. He stood up and didn't take two steps. Cedric stopped where he was in utter embarrassment. No, why don't everyone say anything? What happened? Cedric's eyes first glanced at Hufflepuff's long table. I'm being sorted. At least you have to applaud me to welcome me, right? Seeing no reaction from them, 
Cedric turned and looked back. Professor McGonagall covered his mouth, his eyes filled with relief. No, just separate hospitals. Why are you crying? Looking up at the teacher's chair above, all the classrooms seemed stagnant. Hagrid and Filch, who were standing next to him, both gave him four thumbs up. Only Dumbledore's eyes behind the crescent moon were shining with a faint light. This look contained no emotion at all. It's like a cold scanner. Cedric suddenly felt shuddering, as if he had cast a head-soaking spell and then jumped naked into the icy water. No, no. Cedric suddenly thought of a very outrageous possibility. He looked down at the sorting hat on the stool, then looked at Professor McGonagall again, and said with a cry. You all heard what it just said. Professor McGonagall couldn't stand it any longer. She rarely expressed her passionate feelings in front of everyone. She rushed up and hugged Cedric. Kid, I knew you were the best. Great, your sister. Sorting hat, you old guy. You talk to other people in your head. Why do you keep talking to me when it's my turn? Ding, create a legendary event. Legendary event, the perfect first grader also known as, someone else's child. Reward legendary value two points. In a daze, in everyone's eyes, Cedric instantly became taller again. Many people couldn't help rubbing their eyes. Cedric's figure is still so tall, it's not a temporary illusion. Then, extremely warm applause broke out. There was someone on the long table of Hufflepuff, who never argued about anything, shouting. We have Cedric. We have Cedric. It wasn't until five minutes after Cedric sat down. Dumbledore stood up and suppressed the last bit of discussion. The sorting ceremony continues. Professor McGonagall was reminded and quickly completed the sorting ceremony. Next is the welcome dinner. Everyone had a great time eating, and during the break they didn't forget to discuss today's topic, Cedric. As Professor McGonagall's best friend, Pomona Sprout, the headmaster of Hufflepuff, who was away from Hogwarts during the entire holiday because he was researching dragon manure mixture, was also actively asking McGonagall about Cedric's situation. Chat a few words every time. She couldn't help but glance at Cedric, her eyes full of shock and surprise. She knew Professor McGonagall well. Even before I even spoke to Cedric, I already had an extremely favorable impression of him. Throughout the auditorium, the only ones eating quietly were Cedric and Dumbledore. Both of them were thinking seriously while eating. Dumbledore was examining Cedric, who was also thinking about countermeasures. However, Cedric's silence was soon interrupted. Hello, Cedric, no, classmate, I hope we can get along well in the future. Cedric turned to look. It turned out that a first-year student had the courage and cautiously came to Cedric to clink glasses. Certainly. Cedric was out of thought. Almost reflexively. After quickly raising his glass and touching it with the visitor, he took the initiative to invite all the new first-year students nearby. Everyone come together. Hope we all have a happy school year. Hear his greeting. The first-grade Hufflepuffs all stood up and gathered their cups together to form an irregular circle. Happy school year. Ha 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 ha. All of a sudden, Hufflepuff's dining table became the happiest place in the entire hall. Thank you, Cedric. The visitor left with satisfaction. Seeing his classmates leaving in small steps, Cedric's mood also changed. Forget it, leave him alone. Since you can't hide anymore, let's be honest. Cedric raised his head and met the eyes above again. Hello, principal. After he finished speaking, he drank the wine in the glass in one breath. Dumbledore was stunned at first. Then he smiled and took a sip from his glass. Everything seemed so beautiful. Next, Cedric also completely let go. Come on, take a look at these dishes. Peking roast duck, lion head, Buddha jumping over the wall, squirrel mandarin fish, kung pao chicken, boiled cabbage, etc. These are all the dishes I researched, you all have a try. There's also a big dish called hot pot. If I have a chance another day, I'll set up another table in our lounge. No doubt. The recipes for these dishes were all taught by Cedric to the house elves in the kitchen little by little over the past month or so. Ten Hufflepuffs, nine cooks. Cedric's reputation. With the blessing of more than ten dishes each, it has once again reached a new peak. Everyone has a keen interest in hot pot. Cedric became the unquestionable centerpiece. Beneath the enchanted ceiling, just under the starlight, the students finished their first dinner back at Hogwarts. After everyone returned to the lounge, 
He also kept chatting with Cedric until late at night, until he was extremely tired, and then he put him back to rest. Lying on the bed, Cedric immediately changed his plans. Since it is no longer possible to hide, then the plan that had been dormant for a year was also cancelled. From low profile to high profile, he was about to unleash a trick on Dumbledore. When Harry Potter entered school, he met me who was flourishing in school. At that time, who will you place your hope on? With this thought in mind, Cedric set the alarm clock and got up early the next day, ready to start his strong and above-board plan. Early the next morning, Cedric was surrounded by a group of Hufflepuffs and left the common rest area together, planning to have breakfast together. Not even close to the auditorium, a hoarse but energetic voice kept coming. Selina, be careful not to go that way. The ladder over there will turn to a dead end later. It's still early. You can go to the auditorium to eat first. If you don't know how to get there later, you can come to me and ask. Round the corner, Cedric soon saw Filch, who brushed his coat clean, straightened his back, and hugged Mrs. Norris. At his shout, the first-year students are all walking like flying. As for the senior students, they all looked like they had seen a ghost. They couldn't help but look back at Filch after taking three steps. Mr. Merlin, we have only been away for a summer vacation. What happened to Filch? Why did your temperament suddenly change? If you don't rush out from the corner and yell at us, why don't you show the way to the freshmen? Mr. Filch, with a smile on his face, Cedric shouted loudly towards the figure in front of him. Follow in his footsteps. The dozen or so Hufflepuffs behind him also shouted in unison, Mr. Filch. Filch froze. I don't know if there will be any newcomers, but so many people shouted his name with respect at the same time. For Filch, it was definitely the first time for an older girl to get on the sedan chair. Thank you. He put Mrs. Norris on his shoulders and quickly stepped forward to hold Cedric's hand, his eyes full of emotion. If there weren't so many people now, Filch had to give Cedric a cry. This feeling of not being hated by others but being praised by others is really great. You deserve this. Cedric looked at him and smiled, saying nothing. Then he looked back. He greeted his friends around him. This is Mr. Filch. He is responsible for the patrol and security of the castle. He knows every legend about Hogwarts. If you are interested, you can chat with him. If you don't understand anything, you can ask him for advice. Listen to Cedric. Suddenly there was praise all around. Mr. Filch, please take good care of me in the future. Okay, I will definitely trouble Mr. Filch in the future. Hello, my name is Tyne, do you remember me? Cedric checked Tyne's appearance in the crowd. The character is small and weak. His eyes are very smart when looking at people. He seems to have a flexible mind. I just hope that he can use his intelligence in the right place in the future. Well, Filch was so happy that he didn't know what to do. Face comes from the heart. His wrinkled old face actually showed some kindness at this moment. You go and eat first. The Peking duck from Cedric is very delicious. Try more of it. Let's go. Cedric knew there was no hurry. Filch still has a long way to go before he can truly change everyone's minds. Had breakfast with my friends. Then the official classes at Hogwarts began. All first-year students at Hogwarts must take seven courses. Transfiguration, Spells, Potions, History of Magic, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Herbology and Astronomy. The first six of them are main courses. Astronomy is a compulsory course but not the main subject. Cedric's first class on Monday was two potions classes with Ravenclaw. Potions classes were held in the underground classroom. Not only is this place cooler than the main castle building above, it is also filled with glass jars filled with various specimens of animals. It even made the little Hufflepuffs tremble in fear. Do not be afraid. Aware of the tense atmosphere around you. Cedric who was extremely familiar with this place, immediately started to comfort him. Although Professor Snape looks fierce, he is actually a very knowledgeable professor. He has extremely high attainments in potions and spells. Hear his words. Everyone immediately calmed down. The Hufflepuffs are not afraid anymore, that's because of Cedric's comfort. The Ravenclaws also fell silent. They told Cedric, and Snape, who was so powerful, became curious. I'll tell you a secret by the way. Cedric took everyone to the food basin in the corner to wash their hands. He lowered his voice and said. Actually, 
Professor Snape has always wanted to be a defense against the dark arts teacher, but Principal Dumbledore has always refused. This is because Professor Snape's attainments in potions are unparalleled. Wow. The first year students around him immediately exclaimed. Hear this. He had been hiding in the shadows, preparing to surprise the students. Snape couldn't hide anymore. How did this kid know? Cedric. Snape shouted softly first. After shocking everyone. Then he walked to the desk and said quietly, Next time I hear you talking about the teacher behind his back, I will deduct your points. Professor. Cedric showed a heartless smile, but what I said is true. You are indeed the potion master. Snape didn't know how to reply. But he also has his own methods. I saw him directly opening his roll call book, respond when your name is called, and then find a seat to sit down. Call the names with ease. Relying on the cold temperament and the expression that refuses people thousands of miles away. Snape successfully lowered the temperature in the classroom again. But he soon encountered a new problem. He looked at Cedric who raised his hands straight and narrowed his eyes with a headache. Cedric, I know you know all these questions, so you don't have to rush to answer them all the time. But, Cedric looked innocent. I am now a student of Hufflepuff, and I also want to add points to my academy. The two looked at each other for a while. Snape suppressed a slight twitch in the corner of his eye and said, Hufflepuff plus two points, you can study on your own in the sidelines, don't affect other students. He waved his wand repeatedly. The teacher's corner was cleared, and Cedric's cauldron was placed alone, on the left general's seat next to the podium. Snape usually lectures in front of the podium. This is a plan for myself to be out of sight but out of mind. Okay, teacher. There are two potions classes in the morning. Cedric stayed quiet throughout the first period. But during recess, he still found Snape. Professor, I can't just add two points to your class in one academic year, right? You still want two points per class. Snape smiled coldly. That's too much. Cedric made a bold proposal. How about a 50 cent annual subscription? In Harry Potter's first year, he won the championship with 472 points. Six main courses. That is to say, you only need to get 78 points in each subject. Of course, other students can also earn points, so it is enough for you to get about 50 points in each main course. There are other elective courses that you can earn points for. Cedric's plan is good. Then, Snape made a bold proposal. Let's play a little game. Snape wasn't that easy to control. He quickly proposed a very difficult challenge for Cedric. When making potions, if the number of Hufflepuffs you get wrong does not exceed one, I will give you plus five points. If you fail, I will deduct one point from you. Do you dare? It was supposed to be a break between classes. The Hufflepuffs had all walked out of potions class to take a breather. But after hearing Cedric talking to Snape, everyone gradually returned to the classroom. Here Snape's offer. Everyone took a deep breath. You must know that in the first class just now, a total of 12 of them failed, which means the success rate is only about half. No more than one person may fail. That is almost equivalent to all members being qualified. The quota given was just to take the unexpected into account. If it's a test of Cedric himself, that's okay. After all, even Professor Snape admitted that Cedric knew it during these terms and was willing to spend two points to buy him a quiet class. This is enough to explain everything. This time it is to test how he can help everyone improve their performance. They have confidence in Cedric, but they have no confidence in themselves. This is great, beyond everyone's expectations. Cedric had almost no hesitation and quickly agreed. But I have a supplementary condition. If I successfully improve the potion, then I will be given extra points. He also worked hard for points. It's time for the room of requirement to come in handy, and by the way, the research on drugs to solve squibs has officially begun. Certainly. After Snape agreed, the two quickly reached an agreement. Seeing them reach an agreement, the other Hufflepuffs panicked. Cedric, we, we have no confidence. That's right. What if points are deducted? I can't do it. I'm shaking when cutting roots. I'll never be able to cut them well. Facing the worried classmates, Cedric stood up directly. He put the wand against his throat, and soon his amplified voice echoed in the underground classroom. Students, please don't worry. Since this is the bet I agreed to, I will be responsible for all the points. 
I will be responsible for all the points deducted. Listen, Cedric takes all the responsibility. Many people's worries were put aside, and the crowd gradually became quiet. Secondly, I believe in everyone. We are all the best at Hogwarts. If you can be admitted to Hogwarts, then you must not underestimate your abilities. Cedric walked back and forth in front of the Hufflepuffs, his serious eyes scanning every student who looked at him. Just keep working hard. I believe that everyone can work together to complete this great challenge. Be inspired by him. Everyone looked at each other, with a little joy on their faces. No one wants to prove themselves. No one wants to admit that they just can't do it. No one doesn't want to make a big comeback, then turn around and say to his previous self, it turns out that's all it is. Gradually some people in the crowd nodded, beginning to identify with Cedric. The eyes of the Ravenclaws on the side were gleaming. In their eyes, Cedric in the crowd seemed to be glowing. Learn well and have the courage to take responsibility. Still tall and handsome, sure enough, the sorting hat was right. There was loud applause that was incompatible with the dark basement. Go for it, Cedric, we've got your back. Yes, we will succeed eventually. It's so beautiful. If you read it a hundred times, the meaning will naturally emerge. How did Cedric come up with such philosophical words? Love, love, perfect Cedric. In front of Snape's eyes. Cedric stood radiantly among his classmates, with such an attitude that even he might be confused now. But he spoke again. He also brought this glory to himself. At last, Cedric turned to face Snape. This is the professor's test for me. Reviewing the past will help you learn something new. Read it a hundred times and you will see its meaning. The professor hopes that I will not forget the basics, so I also want to use everyone to help me consolidate the basics, so that I can not aim too high in master potions thoroughly. I will complete the challenge well. Thank you, Professor Snape. He looked at Cedric, who was leaning forward slightly, and the eyes that followed his movements and were cast on him. Snape was unusually confused. The fingers behind his back rose and fell in turn, and he squeezed his wand hard. Under everyone's gaze. Snape responded to Cedric's gratitude with an undetectable slight bow. Warm applause sounded again. The coldness in the basement has been diluted a lot, and everyone is very enthusiastic. The second potions lesson continued. Cedric didn't do anything in class. After Snape finished his lecture, he came to the Hufflepuffs and began to answer questions. Seeing Ravenclaw standing still, he also warmly invited him. Soon, almost the entire class stayed with Cedric at the center, continuing to discuss the contents of the potions class. Snape stood at the door of the classroom and looked back. Looking at Cedric who looked like the sun, he not only began to recall his school days. What were you doing at that time? By the way, competing with James Potter, they are mortal enemies and are incompatible with each other. He even insulted his beloved, causing regrets in his life. No one taught me at that time. What is right and what is wrong? Snape felt sour in his heart. At that time, it would be great if I could meet Cedric. Lunch time, auditorium. When Cedric showed up with the first year Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs, talking and laughing. Instantly became the most dazzling group in the entire auditorium. Let's talk after dinner. Cedric said goodbye to the Ravenclaws first. Then he took the Hufflepuffs and sat down at the dining table. A few seconds later, the hot pot set menu appeared on the table, attracting many Ravenclaws to dine with them. The scene was very lively. This kid is still. Fred looked unhappy. He's really good at confusing people. George said with a sad look on his face. Geminis are very smart. This scene made them realize that it would be very difficult to prank Cedric. After all, it's hard to escape everyone's eyes. But they won't give up. Facing difficulties has always been their characteristic. He's too high profile. Another Weasley sitting with them spoke. He took care of the unique red hair of the Weasley family meticulously, and showed obvious jealousy towards the popular Cedric. If I were a prefect, I wouldn't show off like him. He is none other than Percy Ignatius Weasley. Fred looked at Percy with shock on his face. My lord, Merlin, you actually agree with our views. George copied Fred's expression one to one. This is simply too scary. Fred said with a serious face, can I trouble you to like Cedric too? Otherwise we will doubt ourselves and think that our brain circuits have become like yours. This is terrible. George nodded repeatedly. 
He even put his arms around himself to make a frightened gesture. Snort. Percy glared at his two naughty brothers very unhurriedly. Anyway, mom asked me to watch you. If you do anything that violates school rules, I will definitely tell mom. Abba, ABAA, -A -A, Abba. Fred looked at George resentfully. Abba, Abba, Abba. George spread his hands with helplessness on his face. Lunch ended quickly. After nap, there is herbal medicine class. This time the Hufflepuffs were in class with the Gryffindors. Compared to the loose and loose Gryffindors, they were in twos and threes. The Hufflepuffs who came with Cedric were neatly organized as if they were a real group. But the aggressive Gryffindors are not to be feared. On the contrary, I really like this tense and exciting scene. Everyone stand up. Fred sang. Don't be underestimated by others. George said. Under the leadership of the Geminis, the Gryffindors stood together, watching the Hufflepuffs approaching eager to try. Facing the sharp-edged Gryffindors, Cedric pretended not to notice and took the Hufflepuffs with him to occupy the other side of the classroom. The sword he swung failed. Both Weasley twins felt a little disappointed. But there was no chance at this time because Professor Pomona Sprout had already walked out with a smile. She is a short witch with flowing gray hair. Her thick patched hat and mud-covered body all proved her love for flowers and plants. Even in Hufflepuff's lounge. There are both ice and fire terrains carefully arranged by her, and many special plants are planted on them. This is one of the reasons why Hufflepuffs are generally good at herbology. Overall, she is a very optimistic and compassionate professor. Her eyes fell directly on Cedric. McGonagall told me about your excellence, so you should give it a try first. In fact, Professor McGonagall not only mentioned it, but also with the sorting hat's praise, Sprout had long wanted to take a test on Cedric. Wow, the Weasley twins led the heckling. The Gryffindors all smiled as if they were watching a show. As a student, what I fear the most is the teacher's questions, and this is the first class at school. I didn't teach anything and started asking questions. It's even more difficult. Who is a good person who reads all the textbooks before school starts? Use yourself to save others. The Weasley twins were already expecting that Cedric would look deflated later. Facing the roar of laughter from the Gryffindors. Even the good-tempered Hufflepuffs all showed dissatisfaction. Professor Sprout also realized that his question was difficult, so he comforted him. It doesn't matter. I won't deduct points if you get the answer wrong. I'll give you extra points if you get the answer right. Thank you for your compliment, I'm ready. Cedric responded calmly. Well, Professor Sprout first asked a simple question. How many types of herbs are there? Three types, spontaneous species, cultivated species, and animal species. So how many categories are they divided into? The six major categories are defense, treatment, health, poison, synthesis, and daily life. Okay, so how many divisions will it be divided into in the end? Four, water health division, earth health division, mixed health division, and yao health division. Exactly right, one point for Hufflepuff. Professor Sprout took the lead in applauding Cedric, and then directly made the question more difficult. Her habit from the devil's net. He asked about the ancient method of harvesting mandrake, and then asked about where the balbo tubers grow. Nearly 10 minutes of content. Under Cedric's smooth answer, the Weasley twins' faces grew paler. Very perfect. Professor Sprout smiled broadly and waved his hand. Hufflepuff plus 5 points. Boom. Applause filled the sky. The Hufflepuffs, holding their breath, almost overturned the entire greenhouse with applause. Congratulations on passing Professor Sprout's test and gaining 1,000 experience points. Professor Sprout waited patiently for the applause to subside. Then he asked Cedric, Son, have you memorized all the herbal medicine in the first grade? Yes, but I haven't tried it in practice yet, and there is still a lot to learn. Memorized it. The Weasley twins looked at each other. It's too much to watch, you guy actually memorized it all. No matter how shocked they were, Cedric's modesty was deeply recognized by Professor Sprout. Don't worry, kid, I will teach you all well. Professor Sprout started today's class with a smile. The system prompt sounded again in Cedric's ears. Ding, moved Sprout is successful. You get bonus talent points plus one, Sprout character template card. Because of Cedric's leaping performance. The Weasley twins were hit hard in this session. 
The other Gryffindors, after discovering that Cedric was not aggressive, stopped tit for tat against the Hufflepuffs. Only the Weasley twins still miss Cedric. Wait until the course is over. You win this time. Fred's face was full of unwillingness. But we won't lose again next time. George gritted his teeth. As long as it's a fair fight. Cedric's expression remained unchanged. He even raised his voice and challenged all the Gryffindors. If you want to compete with me, you can come to me directly. As long as it is a reasonable and healthy competition, I can have an upright contest with you at any time. An upright contest. Hearing these exciting words, many Gryffindors' eyes lit up. They admired Cedric's courage to challenge everyone. Many Gryffindors immediately said that they would prepare for this, and they all swore that all future contests would be upright. It is this agreement. This laid the foundation for Cedric to become the dual champion. 20 hundred in the evening. Inside the history of magic classroom. Cuthbert Binns, who was behind the podium, was giving a lecture with his eyes half closed, standing on tiptoes and swaying slightly back and forth. Cedric in the audience was writing furiously. However, he was not doing his homework on the history of magic. He had memorized this boring history long ago. He was studying the anti-squib medicine. More importantly, Cuthbert Binns is a ghost. He has only a weak sense of awareness of living students, and will even be frightened by students who ask him questions. Many students were taking advantage of the history of magic class to chat or catch up on their sleep. Cedric couldn't get the credits from him either. He can only take the test and get full marks then to see if he can complete his test. But what's the problem with squibs? Come to Cedric. There is an essential difference between squibs and muggles. Although they cannot cast magic, they will not be hit by the muggle expelling curse, will not see Hogwarts as a ruin, and can see ghosts like thieves. In other words, squibs possess certain qualities that muggles do not possess, but their qualities are not fully developed. As a result, magic power could not be born in the body. Cedric now has two ideas. One is to restore the essence and see if there are any herbs that can promote the secondary development of this trait. Secondly, that is to say using current medical techniques. Is it possible to create this trait artificially, not just to make them rich, but just to be able to complete the magic spell of normal daily life? Just clean it up, restore it as before, and cast a spell on it. In this way, at least the probability of them being discovered as squibs is very low. When it comes to medicinal herbs, Professor Sprout's template is quite useful. Cedric switched out Professor Sprout's character template card. Template card, Pomona Sprout. Talent, Herbal Medicine. This talent can be upgraded to S level, Master Wizard, Magic plus 5 points, upper limit is 75 points. Special talent, Herb Resistance. Due to long term contact with herbs, your body has acquired a certain resistance and has a certain resistance to any negative status caused by herbs. Life Wish List. Item 1 Qualified Professor and Dean, please become a Hufflepuff student who satisfies him. By completing this wish list, you can upgrade your herbal talent to SS level. The second item, knowledge dissemination, promote the developed dragon dung fertilizer. Completing this wish list will prevent this template card from occupying the slot of the template card. The third item, glorious Hufflepuff, a student achieved three glories for Hufflepuff while studying. Completing this wish list will activate a new special talent, herbal intuition. Herb intuition, because you have been dealing with herbs all year round, when you see or touch a certain herb, you will rely on your intuition and experience to obtain one of its uses. After a thorough understanding, you will have a high chance of discovering its unexplored secrets, ability. As expected, those who are partial to science are all monsters. This kind of special talent has not appeared even in Professors McGonagall and Snake. I didn't expect to see it in Professor Sprout. Cedric lingered on herbal intuition for a long time. If you can win this reward, it will be of great help to the development of squib medicine and potion science. But even if he won the Academy Cup in two years, he would only be honored twice. Then Quidditch is important. Cedric had never played Quidditch before. Because before Harry came, there had never been a precedent for first-year students to join the Quidditch team. And it was Dumbledore's custom to add points casually. As long as Harry enters school, winning the Academy Cup is not guaranteed. Therefore, you must complete glory within these two years and receive a special reward from Professor Sprout. 
When calculating college points before, he even excluded 100 points from the Quidditch Championship. But in terms of glory, this Quidditch Championship is the only glory besides the Academy Cup. Before the first flying lesson, Cedric quickly made a decision in his mind. Talent points minus 2. S level to SS level consumes 2 points. S level Quidditch talent, upgraded to SS level Quidditch talent, awakened title, Wings of Wind, gained legendary value plus 1. Another title and legendary value. Ling Yun's eyes suddenly lit up. Now he has 4 legendary points and 3500 experience points in hand. Not only can a spell be filled instantly, and it can also increase the magic power by 40%. As long as it is a wizard of the same level, it is absolutely impossible to beat him. First grade invincibility has been achieved. There is still a little hidden danger in this kind of upgrade. Special note, the promotion of this talent from a to S level is provided by Professor McGonagall's mission template card. Once removed, this talent will drop to S level. There is nothing we can do. After all, I have to show off my talents in the next flying lesson, otherwise I won't have a chance to join the Quidditch team in advance, or even not. Cedric felt that even this was not safe. I need a bigger reputation to help me break through various limitations, including the little wizard's cognition. After careful consideration, in order to improve the success rate of joining the Quidditch team, Cedric took the initiative to show that thing in the Transfiguration class the next day. Welcome to the Transfiguration class. He looked at Professor McGonagall who jumped down from the podium and regained his human body. Cedric understands. She and Professor Snape both knew how to make their courses go smoothly. That is to first shock these little wizards. Whether it's Professor McGonagall's transfiguration or Professor Snape's effect of walking out of the shadows. All to give them a show of strength. After the stick comes the carrot. Professor Snape relied on his own set of words to describe potions as gorgeous and aloof, like a flower on the high mountain. Coupled with his emphasis, the effect is immediate. Professor McGonagall is much simpler. After turning the desk into a pig and running around in circles, the students were immediately attracted. Such a discovery. It is actually very necessary for Cedric to be more determined and show his ability. Especially since the people in class today are the traitlings. Many people think that Slytherins should be dark, arrogant and cold. That's really too much fan fiction. Godric Gryffindor's best friend is Salazar Slytherin. If they didn't have similar pursuits and similar preferences, would they become close friends? There are many similar evidences. At the sorting ceremony, the sorting hat once captured Harry's qualities. It once said to Harry at that time, everything is in his mind, and Slytherin can help him reach glory. Slytherin and Gryffindor, just a thought, just like Cao Cao and Lu Bei. Cao Cao would appreciate Lu Bei, but he would not be as dedicated to the people and righteous as Lu Bei. Instead, he would be more tolerant and ambitious, and more eager for victory. Before Harry Potter came, the Snake Academy almost sweeps the Academy Cup every year, and that's really because they have an unusual desire for victory. All in all, in Cedric's eyes, a real Slytherin should be one who has ambition and talent, is snobbish and prudent in protecting himself. Professor Snape is actually the most representative Slytherin. He held it in for many years. Isn't it just to take revenge on Voldemort? It is precisely because Slytherins desire victory that they worship the strong because they believe the former can lead them to victory. Today, let me become this strong player. When the course is halfway through, when Professor McGonagall finished teaching the theoretical knowledge and began to distribute matches, Cedric softly requested Professor McGonagall who was approaching. Professor, some friends want to see my transformation, can I show it to you? If it were anyone else, Professor McGonagall would definitely refuse this request, which seemed a bit like showing off. But who makes Cedric the student she is satisfied with? Okay, let's show everyone the magic of transformation. After getting permission, Cedric came to the podium. Fellow students, actually, I have a little experience in transfiguration. It's also because some students are curious, so I will show it today. I hope it can make everyone like the subject of transfiguration more. Cedric glanced at Professor McGonagall again. After seeing her nodding, he immediately started calling out the iron-eating beast in his heart. To enhance the effect, the moment Cedric's transformation was completed, 
he stepped forward and roared like a bear. Ho ho! A giant bear over two meters tall appeared out of thin air. It completely exceeded the expectations of all the little wizards. When Cedric made a deafening roar, people's heartbeats seemed to speed up and their whole bodies trembled. The roar echoed in the classroom. The sound, full of primitive and wild power, seems to remind humans how insignificant they are in the face of the power of nature. But when Cedric stretched out his hand for everyone to touch, my attitude changed instantly. With Cedric's encouragement, the Hufflepuffs boldly began to touch his outstretched right hand. Wow, this is so handsome. This animal is furry and feels comfortable to touch. What animal is this? As expected of Cedric. See the effect. Cedric smiled, then quickly transformed back into his human form. Animagus is a very advanced form of transformation. There were only seven registered Animagus in the 20th century. Professor McGonagall introduced Cedric's achievements with great satisfaction. After Cedric becomes proficient, he will become the eighth registered Animagus. Wow! Warm applause broke out, even from the Slytherins. Single digit quantity. The little wizards instantly understood the difficulty of this skill, and their admiration for Cedric grew to a higher level. Cedric was especially surprised by the reaction of the Slytherins after class. After class, the Hufflepuffs surrounded Selick again. They were chattering, asking for all kinds of information about the iron-eating beast. But they soon discovered that the Slytherins hadn't left either. Because of the bad reputation of Slytherins, the Hufflepuffs instantly thought that they wanted to provoke Cedric, and they immediately gathered around and leaned on each other tightly. Normally Hufflepuffs are very easygoing. But at critical moments, Hufflepuffs are the most courageous. Etc. Cedric quickly stopped the students around him. First of all, he didn't believe that the Slytherins would attack him here. Secondly, he is not afraid of taking action. He had only been in class for a few days, and the Slytherins across from him didn't know as many spells combined as he did. He showed a flawless smile. I wonder what the Slytherin classmates want from me. We just want to ask you one thing. A young Slytherin with somewhat pale skin stepped forward. When the sorting hat was assigned, could you have chosen Slytherin? Can. Cedric answered truthfully. Why didn't you choose Slytherin? This is an interesting question. Cedric thought for a moment, and then answered according to his true thoughts. I love winning, there's no doubt about it. But I also have many other hobbies. I love playing, making friends, and especially cooking. Mentioned dry rice. The Hufflepuffs around them all laughed. Cedric's gourmet food series is another important reason why he can gather Hufflepuffs. Eat a delicious meal. Listening to Cedric telling the story behind the food again, this kind of enjoyment is really hard to understand for those who are not a foodie. If you were asked to transfer to Slytherin now, would you? What? The Hufflepuffs stopped laughing. Hufflepuffs big baby is being taken care of. Listen to what you are saying. In the history of Hogwarts, I have never heard of any house robbing people. Asshole. The Hufflepuffs are angry. Hansen is a young wizard with a red nose, a round face and brown hair. He likes to eat pure meat dishes like lion's head, and likes to sit in a sunny position in the Hufflepuff lounge, where he can loosen the soil with interest for three full hours while taking care of the potted herbs. You mess up his curls and put some dirt on the tip of his nose. He would just laugh, but this time he was really angry. Hansen would not allow his dear friend, gourmet menu provider, academic leader, fairy tale king, and persuasive deskmate Cedric to be snatched away. Him now. It's like being touched by an honest man. Cedric is Hufflepuff Cedric. He clenched his fists. With his face flushed, he rushed to the front and went out. But he is not alone. The Hufflepuffs just surrounded him and rushed towards the Slytherins. They formed a semicircle and vaguely surrounded each other. The Slytherins were visibly panicked. What about the Hufflepuff who was said to be the friendliest and most characterless person? Why is the shadow of Brother Flathead vaguely appearing in front of the little snakes? The Slytherins who were already standing in a group became even more nervous. They stood in a circle and looked around with vigilant eyes, looking for possible breakthroughs. But then an embarrassing scene occurred. Because the first charms class hadn't even started yet, everyone was a little overwhelmed with the wands they were holding. Many people silently put away their wands and prepared to decide the outcome with their fists. Lumos. A dazzling light flashed. 
Cedric took advantage of everyone to bend down and close their eyes, so he quickly squeezed into the middle of the crowd due to his tall stature. Sounding sonorous, tap the wand gently on your throat. Cedric's voice was heard by everyone. First of all, thank you Slytherins for the invitation, but my house is Hufflepuff, and this will never change. Thank you for your love, but I hope that the competition between us will be conducted in a reasonable and orderly manner. Cedric turned his back to the Slytherins and first persuaded the more familiar Hufflepuffs in front of him. Their riots. It really shocked him. It's wrong to fight like this, isn't it? As long as you don't leave Hufflepuff. Hansen was the first to rush out and the first to retreat in the face of admonishment. A conflict was quickly diffused. But Cedric still didn't notice. The eyes of the Slytherins behind him. When the classroom turned into an iron-eating beast and roared just now, the Hufflepuffs felt it was novel, cute and fun. But what they saw was power. Except fear. The bear-like roar also aroused a strange kind of awe and respect in their hearts. People have always had a soft spot for powerful and mysterious creatures. The Slytherins had a deep respect for Cedric's strength and ferocity. Plus just now, the tall Cedric stood in front of them. Casting two magic spells in succession, he quickly took control of the situation and persuaded Hufflepuff to retreat in a few clicks. This is simply the complete expression of strength. Plus the sorting hat said it too. Cedric has Slytherin qualities, he only listens to what he likes. Their instinct to follow the strong and achieve success faster becomes stronger and stronger. Very good, thank you everyone. Cedric turned around, tilted his head at the Slytherins behind him, and motioned for them to leave quickly. The Slytherins soon began to move. But after most of them had reached a safe position at the door. The Slytherin who could be last. Still he turned around and said that sentence. Cedric, you have the blood of Slytherin, pure blood, and you have the belief of Slytherin, the pursuit of victory. Even if you were in Hufflepuff, you are still a Slytherin. Again, Hansen roared and rushed forward. The Slytherins immediately dispersed, but they ran into the corridor, still shouting. Cedric you are a true Slytherin. One day you will realize this fact and return to the Slytherin family. We'll wait for you. The little badgers are so angry, these guys are so evil. From now on, Hufflepuff's protective, game, operation has quietly officially started. Such an atmosphere. It also continued into the afternoon spells class. The first person to notice something was wrong was naturally Professor Flitwick in class. He found that the Slytherin and Hufflepuff students down there were very strange. The little snakes always look at Hufflepuff, and once Hufflepuff notices that the other person is looking at them, he will immediately glare at them. The little snakes who were stared at smiled coldly and then turned around. Not long after that, some of the little snakes couldn't help but look over. I can't have a good class like this. As a dueling champion, Professor Flitwick's eyesight is beyond words, after two or three times. He discovered the source immediately. Cedric. Professor Flitwick knocked on the desk. Come to the front. I've heard of you. Professor Flitwick stood on a pile of books, looking at Cedric in front of him from behind the desk. He is quite a handsome young man. McGonagall was full of praise for his transformation talent, and Professor Sprout also verified his knowledge of medicinal herbs. Just don't know. How about your talent for magic spells? In fact, both Snape and McGonagall were very aware of Cedric's abilities and charms. However, they are not professors of charms, so naturally they will not mention anything more in this aspect, otherwise they will appear to be taking the credit from the charms professor. I heard that you are an excellent little wizard. I wonder if you have practiced magic spells in advance. Cedric hasn't spoken yet. Someone from the Slytherin behind shouted, Professor, he has mastered many spells. Hufflepuff suddenly felt unhappy again. Why is it your turn to shout, making it seem like Cedric is your guy? Oh, Professor Flitwick pointed. Show it, for every spell you know, I will add one point to Hufflepuff. So good. Then I'm coming. Cedric didn't expect such an unexpected surprise. He took out his wand and cast all the spells he had learned for a hundred years. Very good. Fire making spell, the action is very standard. Unlocking spell, locking spell, these are really a pair of enemy spells. A new look, the first spell that naughty little wizards learn. Fluorescent flashing, this is also very practical. The floating spell is perfect. The ending sound is really pleasant to the ears no matter how I listen to it. 
Professor Flitwick waved his wand and was about to open his mouth to give Cedric points. But I didn't expect it. Cedric actually started to use it. Flying curse, loud voice, softening curse, cutting curse, leg locking curse, universal breaking curse, locking tongue and throat seal, iron armor curse, and stop the curse. Add the previous spells for a total of 15 spells. This is the biggest gain from Cedric coming to Hogwarts early. There was silence in the audience. They all knew that Cedric was very strong, but they didn't expect him to be so strong. I haven't received any discounts on my books yet. Has the other party learned the entire curse book for a year? Not only that, but he also learned many other spells. They even suspected that Cedric had already learned even the second grade spells. This is the first time for everyone to read. Why are you so unique? It feels like we are all racing together. While I am waiting for the starting gun, you are already preparing to sprint to the finish line. I haven't even finished the dishes yet, and you're already wiping your mouth. Incredible. 15 points for Hufflepuff. Professor Flitwick moved so hard that his hair trembled. After the announcement, he jumped off the stack of books and came to Cedric, looking up and down at the handsome young man in front of him. A layman looks at the excitement, an expert looks at the door. To the other little wizards, they just saw a fireworks like magic, but in his eyes they saw more of Cedric's extraordinary qualities. First, every spell is a success. This is the stability of magic power that is different from ordinary people. Secondly, Cedric's movements in casting spells are clean and neat, his magic power is extremely abundant, and his spelling pronunciation is also very accurate. Even the final magical power is much stronger than that of ordinary wizards. These five are extremely rare talents. Ordinary wizards who get two or three of them can already be proud of the crowd. Cedric actually has them all. No doubt. He is a wizard with no weaknesses in the hexagon. The best talent for the curse duel. It is a top grade rough gemstone that cannot be missed. With a little carving, it can shine brightly. Child. Professor Flitwick, with gleaming eyes, grabbed Cedric's arm and asked cautiously. Are you interested in dueling? No wonder he was so careful. Everybody knows. Hufflepuff is the least competitive of the group of wizards. He is afraid that he will not be interested if he hears Cedric say, I prefer to work. That would be embarrassing. However, this time Cedric still didn't have time to answer. The excited little snakes once again answered for him first. Of course, Cedric has the same heart as the Slytherins, always pursuing victory. Professor Flitwick was stunned. What are the Slytherins doing? Why are they suddenly praising Cedric? They are not the most dedicated to winning. Do you regard all other colleges as enemies? Has the world changed now? Everyone loves Cedric. Leave them alone. They have some unrealistic ideas now, and they will give up after a while. Cedric quickly brought Professor Flitwick's attention back. Of course, I'm very happy to learn the skills of magic duel. Ah, oh, very good. Professor Flitwick didn't think clearly for a while and didn't bother to think about it. What's more important is the good seedlings in front of you. Ding, I am moved by Professor Flitwick's success. You get bonus talent points plus one, Professor Flitwick template card. Great, it's shipped again. Cedric cheered in his heart. You don't have to look to know. This professor who specializes in magic will definitely give him a big surprise. And there is another key thing. After being moved by Professor Flitwick, he could also ask more detailed questions about the techniques of magic spells. Maybe there is something in it that can help change the squib. After class that day, Cedric followed Professor Flitwick back to his office, and after getting the other person's experience record, he asked this question. Squib, I really know a little bit about it. Professor Flitwick immediately explained. The squib is not good enough in terms of the stability of magic power and the total amount of magic power. Professor Flitwick is very patient. Although he didn't know why Cedric cared about this issue. But I still try my best to explain. Every little wizard will have a magic rampage period. The magic power is like a grand firework that will bloom in their bodies instantly, leaving seeds of magic power increase and invisible rivers in their bodies. With age. Magic power will continue to grow from the body, and they will continue to gather along the river. The larger the river formed, the more stable the magic power will be. Listen to Professor Flitwick's explanation. Ling Yun's understanding of magic has reached a new level. 
It turns out that the magic power needs to be dug out first, and then condensed in the subsequent natural growth. The so-called river channel. It's a bit like tapping gum. After a wound is separated, the gum can begin to be produced along the separated opening. For squibs, Professor Flitwick went on to explain. Either the explosion was not powerful enough, or there was no explosion at all. There were very few channels created by the explosion and could not hold much at all, so there was not enough magic power gathered in the body to activate the magic. Heard so much. Ling Yun almost understood it. So it's actually an explosion to widen the channels, and the second is to condense the magic power of the body. Actually there's only one. Professor Flitwick once again gave Ling Yun a new surprise. In order to improve my dual strength, I have actually studied the growth of magic power. The riot of magic power can actually be simulated externally, but the body cannot condense the magic power, so there is no way. I tried many methods later. But it can't moisturize the bodies of the squibs, otherwise I can raise my magic power to another level. Professor Flitwick looked regretful. But Cedric was extremely happy. Professor, you are really amazing. Cedric gained so much today. Not only did they accurately confirm the two major problems with the squib, but they even solved one of them. This is nothing. Professor Flitwick's face turned rosy after being praised. Embarrassed, he waved his hand and asked, By the way, I don't know why you ask this. That's right, I heard. Cedric repeated the reason he told Filch. I was just shocked after hearing it. Then I felt that they were pitiful, so I decided to help them. There is also a part of the reason why I asked Mr. Filch, but he doesn't know that I know, so please keep this secret. Of course there's no problem with keeping it secret. Professor Flitwick blinked at Cedric, but you are more interested in Filch. Looking at Cedric who smiled and said nothing, Professor Flitwick said very sadly. Actually, I heard about you before class today. You checked into Hogwarts early and successfully changed Filch. Thinking of this, old acquaintance, who has been at Hogwarts for more than 10 years. Professor Flitwick admired Cedric even more. Who is Filch? From Hogwarts to Peeves, to the young wizards from the four major colleges, to the professors, the four deans, and Principal Dumbledore, no one likes him. I don't know how many people have tried to persuade him to change his temper. But even Dumbledore couldn't do anything to him. Like a broken sticker. If you don't tear it off, it will look ugly if it's stuck there. But if you tear it off, the glue marks left behind are likely to be even uglier and require more energy on your part to deal with. And it's not over once and for all. He always appears in front of you over and over again. Fortunately, everyone can suppress him. So even if he occasionally makes everyone uncomfortable, everyone habitually ignores him. You only look for him when you need him. Cedric is different. In just over a month since he arrived, Filch has become completely new. When I saw Filch reminding the little wizards, not only the senior students almost stared out of their eyes, but even the professors were secretly dumbfounded. This is simply a miracle. Merlin had to shout when he saw it, this is the power of magic. After this incident, when professors communicate privately, they all spoke highly of Cedric. Even the strictest McGonagall and the coldest Snape have praised Cedric's excellence more than once. In their mouths, he is a nearly perfect student in both character and talent. I feel a little ashamed to say it. When I was young, I always pursued victory and glory, but I never thought about life like you do, and I never had such a positive influence on anyone. I am not as good as you. Professor Flitwick became more and more sad as he spoke. Cedric quickly comforted him. Professor Flitwick, you are the most powerful magic professor in my mind. Your dual trophies are all the goals I strive for. Under his constant comfort, Professor Flitwick quickly shook off his sadness and remembered his real reason for bringing Cedric back to his office. By the way, this is for you. He pulled out a very old copy. A long and narrow booklet like a communication test. The outside of the booklet was stained with a few spots of blackened blood, and the edges of the cover were already very rough. The paper inside seemed to be about to fall apart, and the sides looked a little uneven. Although the appearance inside is not good. But the outermost part is carefully tied tightly with cowhide straps. At first glance, it seems that it is an item that has been used for a long time and is very cherished. Professor Flitwick placed the pamphlet into Cedric's hands. This is my spell notebook. You can try to teach yourself. 
If you don't understand anything, feel free to ask me. Ding, get the mysterious book, Professor Flitwick's notebook. It contains 122 magic spells that you have not learned yet. Hold this magic spell and consume varying experience points to quickly learn various magic spells. I go, Cedric yelled in his mind. As expected, these science-minded big guys are all great treasures. He made up his mind. He would never let go of every professor who showed up at Hogwarts. He might be able to tell which professor had a treasure in his hands. Thank you so much, Professor Flitwick. Cedric gave Professor Flitwick a big hug. The latter burst out laughing. Both of them ended the conversation very happily. Hold the notebook in your arms. Cedric's excitement lasted until after dinner. After dinner, in the Hufflepuff common room. After he talked about the romance of the Three Kingdoms again, his excitement subsided, and then fatigue came over him, and he fell asleep until the astronomy class in the evening. Jogging all the way to the astronomy tower. When he looked at the starry sky through the telescope and saw dots of stars in the starry sky, constellation patterns composed of different connections emerged in his mind. Suddenly, a wild imagination popped into Cedric's mind uncontrollably. Isn't it just nourishing the body? Professor Flitwick's magic doesn't work. Maybe, I can try mysterious oriental medicine. And the invisible river that was blown up, doesn't it sound a lot like the meridians of the human body? Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.